Welcome to the All About Nothing podcast. The views expressed on this program are the opinions of the hosts. Listeners are encouraged to follow the show on Twitter at A-N underscore pod or at theallaboutnothing.com. You can email the show at theallaboutnothing.com. You may also call and leave the show a message at 8036720533. Thank you for listening. All right. Welcome to the All About Nothing podcast. Zach King, Bear Gruber. Trent Clark is not with us this week because Trent is actually uh, traveling, I believe, for Thanksgiving. Is that correct? Uh, no, we told him he couldn't be on. We couldn't stand him after last week in the Capri shorts. That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, all I told you was quit looking and it would be okay. But you would not <laughs> stop staring. Uh, we do have with us this week Mike Dillon, who is the uh, the host of the uh, Cocky Talk uh, podcast here in Columbia. Mike, you thank you very much for uh, joining us this week. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be on. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome, welcome. Um, we uh, one of the reasons we wanted to have Mike on was partly because uh, I don't know enough about sports to be able to talk about it with at great length. Zach is very much a Gamecock fan. Mike is a Gamecock fan as well. And I support the Gamecocks because they're the Columbia local team. So, you know, uh, as long as they're not playing Georgia Tech and as long as they're not playing the Falcons, because right now I feel like that's about the same competition level as the Falcons and Gamecocks. So, yeah, it would be a, it would be a draw game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Even, even with Drew Brees having caught COVID, uh, you know, Falcons still could not seem to over overcome the uh, New Orleans Saints. No, and my my fantasy uh, opponent did not set their line, so I, I won handedly this week. I noticed, that. <laughs> and he had Drew Brees out, so I was like, yes. I noticed that, <laughs> as well as the individual on in our league that is currently number one. The her opponent also did not set uh, their nope. their their lineup, which. Uh, I'm gonna be. I get to play that person that week, next week too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I actually called Tim and said, "Hey, set your lineup." <laughs> which, which I'm gonna be completely honest. In in previous seasons, I have always gotten on to people that did that because the idea of of someone calling and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call him out by name. So Chris had this habit of literally going to people that I was playing against and saying, "Hey." you're playing Barrett this week. You may want to set your lineup like around Wednesday, Thursday, something like that Thursday morning. And it's like, come on, man, that's not, and please don't, I play Tim next week. So please don't tell him to set his lineup. <laughs> well, then you're going to lose. I'm going to take second place. Yeah. I am. And I, am I will be right until I, I get am. first back. I, <laughs> I am bound to lose this week, which is, which is disappointing. I I'm, I'm not happy about it, but at least I wasn't fired from my job. Um, so one oh. of the reasons, yeah, one of the reasons we brought Mike on <laughs> was because uh, Mike hosts uh, again. He hosts a a podcast called called uh, uh, Cocky Talk, and uh, if you have not checked it out already, you definitely want to check it out. Um, I found them on uh, Apple Podcasts. So, uh, Mike, you are uh, clearly a big fan of sports. You play what oh, yeah. five or six nights a week? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> volleyball, kickball, soccer. I went golfing today. You know, there you go. I used to play football when I was younger and could handle it okay. a little bit. Well, nice. I, I I enjoy having uh, having you on. Um, we, what we played uh, we played how many seasons of kickball? Like ten? Like there's been a lot. Oh, yeah, it's been it's been over a few different uh, four or five years now, hasn't it? Oh yeah. And oh. you're still friends with Barrett? Do you still talk to him when you show up? Yeah, Hold on. I am. Hold on. <laughs> I want to point out, Zach. I I just want to point out. Uh, Zach, we have seen each other almost every day, except for during the <laughs> pandemic. We used to see each other every single day. You also give me a hundred dollar bill every time we hang out. So, well, look, yeah, he doesn't do that for me. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite certain. I understand where this conversation is going, but, uh, no, I, um, <laughs> no, uh, so we, we play kickball and, uh, you know, if you if you ever if, if you're ever bored and you, right you want to go look, uh, we have uh, we have our kickball season posted out there on our website that uh, you can get to. It's uh, what K it's bod-kb.com. Um, no, 
literally there's no point in checking it out i keep up to date basically with the scores and 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 where we sit in the standings and that's that's about it it's nothing entertaining or anything which so right now we're doing pretty good in the standings aren't we we're we're number two which which is really weird because we we've won all of our games but we we moved back in the standings because uh actually one of you and chris's friends charlie and his wife are on the number one team um you oh, know really? charlie right yeah we did, we played with charlie I don't he know. played with us one season. Yeah. A few years back. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was, that was a pretty good season. But yeah, so Charlie and his wife apparently play on the team. Uh, they jumped us uh, in the standings because they have a higher strength of schedule or a higher strength of victory. However, it is, you know, they use to determine scores or, you know, standings and whatnot for soccer. That's what we use for, uh, for, oh, ever I play. you know, they would. I know yeah. they did all that for the football standings. I thought it was pretty standard wins and losses. It it was <laughs> up until they realized that that we there were so many teams that some of them don't ever play each other. So you had to come up with something else. But it's yeah. it's a very complicated equation that I have looked at and tried to break down, and still for the life of me can't figure out how they do that. So um, you can just keep winning and making it easy. That's that's right. Eventually, we'll just have to play somebody for the championship, and this might be the season we do it. So I, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kickball as an adult is fun because I don't know, we're playing a kid sport. So I love it. I That's do. Why I love it pretty much. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you know, as long day. as nobody's, nobody's getting hurt. Nobody's, uh, nobody's fighting, you know, that's, exactly. uh, that's what's important. So, uh, I did, uh, want to discuss, and I know you guys discussed it last week on, on your show. Um, but really, I, I, I don't understand the whole Will Muschamp thing because I kind of stopped paying a lot of attention once um, Muschamp was announced as the head coach. I kind of, it, it just kind of went past me because at the same time I was losing Craig John or uh, uh, Johnson down at Georgia tech. So uh, Paul Johnson. It, yeah, Paul Johnson, not Craig. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's the whole Muschamp era. How, do, how long did it even last? This was his sixth year, I believe. Six fifth years. Year. Fifth year. This fifth was year. his fifth okay. year. And then, you know, he started out, I think the first year was uh, six and six or something like that. Then he had the really good second year where they went nine and three, okay. which I think got him a lot of, um, I guess, trust with Ray Tanner and yeah, money right. too. Yeah, that got him the money. Yeah. And then ever since then, it's just been, you know, kind of slowly but surely slipping back downhill. And then this year, especially just the it starts off bad we we get one good win against Auburn but then after that we have just the three terrible losses in a row to LSU A&M and then uh who was the last one why am I blanking um whoever it was killed us last did we played Florida yet we haven't played oh, Ole Miss Ole, Ole Miss that's right Ole Miss the game, the game that he got fired after yeah so I mean they gave up like 160 points in that stretch and he kept, you know, he said he prides him. He's always said he prides himself on the, his defensive coaching, and he's a defensive minded coach. And I just think, at that point, after that three game stretch and that defensive performance, I think it was too much. I think all, almost all the fans were already had decided they were ready to move on. Sure. But I think after those three, that that really pushed uh, the administration to make the change, and probably the board to really get in some ears and yeah. throw some money for the buyout. Do you, because that buyout was a lot of money too. They did oh, have yeah. to come up with a lot of cash. Uh, so. What almost sixteen million is is his believe, buyout? Yes. Unless somewhere he, in unless that he, ballpark, unless he lands on his feet some other position somewhere, and, right. and they offer him a contract, then 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 South Carolina is in debt to him sixteen million. Yeah, and they, you know I know there's a lot of different negotiating things they can do. I've heard a bunch of different. They don't have to pay it all at once, or there's depending on what job he has next or how fast he gets a job, it might take some off, you know, stuff like that, but it's still a, a huge chunk of money oh, to get right. rid of someone when you, yeah. when, especially because you have to turn around and pay a new coach your next season. Exactly. So. Well, and so I, I, you know, and this isn't to say that, that any of this was planned because I don't think South Carolina planned on having such a slow start this season. Um, but they set it up pretty good with having Mike Bobo behind him as far as him being the, the, the coordinator that would then come in as the interim coach. Um, and, and Bobo has, you know, 
plenty of accolades around the Southeast. I mean, he was at Georgia for what? Uh, he was at Georgia for a number of years. A long time. Yeah. He was down there with Mark Rick before yeah. Kirk Mark for a while. Then he was went out to Colorado State for a few years. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been around, but he was been around the SEC most of the time before he went out there to Colorado State. Right. And then uh, Bobo comes in, of course, to South Carolina. And now, you know, in his first season as uh, coordinator for the offense, now he's checked in as the, uh, the, the, the interim head coach. And I think, I, I think it seems as though, just based on some of the stuff I've read, that it seemed as though South Carolina was really hoping to get a win this weekend to maybe possibly solidify the potential of having Bobo maybe lose the interim title. But, you know, how do you guys feel about that? Like, is Mike Bobo the type – of of guy that moves into a head coach position well i can give up my take on it um mike boba is not going to get the head coaching job no i don't think that would i don't think that's even a possibility whether he's retained as an oc i don't know um i think it's down to napier and beamer in, in my opinion and yeah. that's i think if you bring shane beamer in he knows what winning at South Carolina is like. He he could go get someone like GA Mangus or something like that, bringing them back. He and he can bring keep Connor Shaw there. And Connor Shaw clearly said he doesn't want to go anywhere. Yeah, I think I think you bring that culture of winning and the people who've done it into it. I think that's something that would that would be in the right, right direction. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think Bobo is going to get the job. I know even if he would have went out there and won the last three, I just think that people would view it as kind of leftovers from the must champ era. And people are so done oh, yeah. with that, that they just want to move on. But like you said, I do think there's a chance that he could be retained as OC. I guess it's just going to depend on who the coach is. I agree. It's between probably Beamer and Napier at this point. A lot of people still want Hugh freeze, but I, I just don't see it happening. Well, I yeah. Just, and Hugh said it's not happening, happening basically. Tennessee. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know where to end up, but yeah, I I agree. Beamer was here um, in the early days of Spurrier, and it now all the reports are that he really, really wants the job, mm-hmm. and I think that matters. So having somebody that's done it and you know is enthusiastic about coming back and trying to turn it around, um, and I think he would be more of kind of the CEO head coach rather than X's and O's guys. He would surround himself with really good coordinators, right? On both sides of the ball, kind of like Dabo's done up at Clemson. I was about to say the same thing. Way yeah and um i i i kind of think that i like the idea of shane beamer coming back even though i also would think uh, i think billy napier could also get the job done just maybe in a different sort of way i like i like the connections that bringing shane beamer could have even you know being what assistant head coach at oklahoma with lincoln yep. riley or whatever it is and then i mean his connections with virginia tech and beamer ball his father i mean he yeah. brings a lot to the table and Absolutely. special teams are pretty stellar when he was here so he could at least coach that if he felt so inclined to do so, yeah. so. And keeping connor shaw is essential whoever gets the job has to keep connor shaw on the staff and and in some capacity for sure and, and, and y'all just to clarify connor shaw is is player what is exactly Connor Shaw is doing? For quarterback team? coach. Oh, he's now quarterback. He's quarterback. Okay. Now he is. Okay. When Bobo, when Bobo took over, he promoted Connor Shaw. For, he was doing the player development, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, the Lattimore, the title that Lattimore right. had beforehand. Exactly. I'll tell you what, uh, watching Luke Jody on Saturday for his first game, the biggest thing that I took away from it was he, he was, having fun that kid had a smile on his face when he was out there and guess who never had a smile on his face <laughs> colin hill looked like he was out there to like all right my knees on my mind and where's shy smith those are the two things he's looking for oh wait there's three hand it off to harris real quick <laughs> i mean i, I just I hate, I hate it <laughs> i've been wanting to see Doty since he committed to us when, back in high school I, like i told you i didn't actually get to see the game just yet but i've seen the mm-hmm. highlights and I, I saw him I was glad to see how many times he actually attempted to throw the ball too, and they didn't just try and run him in certain situations. And um, hopefully, hopefully oh, we stick with Doty going forward because if there's no way now we can go back to Hill, I don't think. No, I don't think. I think it would be dumb. Everyone would be. <laughs> we'd start. Everyone would start chaining fire a Bobo. Like, <laughs> oh my god! For the last two games, now it's Connor Shaw's the head coach. <laughs> don't say a bad word about him. Oh, that would be wild. 
<laughs> I think I, I, what to do. I honestly feel like Connor Shaw eventually could become a head coach somewhere. I, you know, I will, we'll see how he does at quarterback coach and we'll see how that goes, but you know, he's, he's always had a really good attitude. I mean, you know, for, for a guy that, that went to the NFL on what he was undrafted, right? I mean, am, am I right about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah he was, he, he won't, I don't think he was, or was it like no, late, late draft? If he was, it was very late, but I, th- I think he was undrafted and got picked up. Yeah. Afterwards. But and he looked good in some preseason games for the Bears that I saw. Him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, what? He just he suffered. He suffered a couple injuries that, that just basically took him out of the, uh, just took him out. And that was, that thumb, was it. thumb injury and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, already Gamecock fans that want him to be the coach now without any experience. Oh, I, I have no I, doubt. I don't necessarily think it's the right time for that, but I agree. You get, give him some um, experience, keep him on the sideline, working with quarterbacks for now. And yeah down the road i don't see any reason he couldn't be well and no. I, can't, I can't i can't speak for you guys but i every time every time a new baseball season starts or a new football season starts i keep seeing the age of the guys that are the starters and and, and i now recognize that i am older than every single starter in in major league baseball and, and oh, you <laughs> you literally are you laugh you guys will get there you'll see no, um, <laughs> it's, it's starting to happen to me. It's starting to. Because no, <laughs> realistically, like I, you know, what Acuna for the Braves is what he'll be twenty. He'll be twenty one when this season starts in in come March. Twenty one. You know, I. I, I Wait, I no, he's already. I thought he already. He was twenty one. Yeah, he's twenty one now. But when the season starts, he'll be oh, twenty one. Yeah. You know, I think the last person I could think of that was that young for the at least started for the Braves was Raphael for call. And they couldn't actually even peg how old he was, because every time they bring up his age, they'd be like, well, he might be 19. He might be 20, he might be 21. Not really sure, because the hospital that kept his birth certificate burned in a fire or something. I'm making that up. That's that's not is that how they got him into Little League first. Yeah, that's, that's right. like when you see those kids out there like this, this is like nine to 12, right? Yeah, well, that guy has a beard. Yeah. He's out there throwing 90 mile an hour fastballs. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's like if you ever watched the movie Bench Warmers with uh Rob mm-hmm. Schneider. Yeah. That's like the, the guy that's on the mound. Yeah, the guy that's out there pitching on the mound. He's he, he's sneaking the beers in his in his glove and he's like, How old is he? Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Also, it reminds me of the dodgeball with the when they play the Girl Scouts and the one girl that has the hair on her arms and the mustache. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry, they're disqualified. Somebody was taking illegal beaver hormone. <laughs> God damn it, Janice. <laughs> uh, well, I know for the most part when we have when when Trent is here, uh, Clemson seems to make its way into the conversation, and uh, I I I He's want awful, to Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Trent is Trent is Trent is one of our best, uh, one of our best. Um, but Clemson didn't play this weekend because they had to cancel the game with or postpone the game with Florida State. Um, Georgia they Tech are didn't play. Yeah, there's yeah. I I I don't get that. Right? Yeah, because they hate Florida State because they owe them like a hundred. <laughs> like, uh, they just want to give the weapons back, and Florida State's like, yeah, you know what? No, we don't have enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't blame well, was it because I saw I was at the wedding yesterday and just saw it got canceled and I, then I saw Clemson fans all upset about it. I it had to be COVID. They player tested positive. Is that right? Well, our, see, our game last night we had below the fifty-three scholarship players or whatever, yeah. and you you have to agree to play. If Missouri or South Carolina would have called in and said we don't have enough, we we can't play. The game's postponed or moved. That's what Florida State did, from my understanding. And Clemson fans are just calling it, calling BS on it. Well, I mean, what difference? I mean, smart I move, man. You don't want to get embarrassed. Who wanted to, who yeah, wants I mean, to get embarrassed? That result was going to be bad for Florida State. So <laughs> it was. It was. Wouldn't be it, good. It was going to be bad. Well, and that's the same thing with Georgia Tech and Miami this weekend. This is now the second game in a row that Georgia Tech has had postponed um, in in the name of not having enough scholarship players on the on the field. So, you know. Right. It, opposing team or was it georgia tech i feel like it was probably georgia tech uh i i i, I i'm not 100 percent georgia i'm not 100 percent sure that georgia tech has actually filled out their scholarship positions this year uh i'm not i'm not saying that is a bad thing i'm just saying i this is georgia tech's rebuilding 
let's let's just we're, we're just gonna call it what it is georgia tech is still reading yeah I, I see that old lady standing on the back of the titanic it's been 85 <laughs> years i'd They're still like to point out, out of that triple option aren't they it's tough. I mean, you can't, it's, yeah. that's a, that's not an easy one just to pull out of. I mean, you, you, no, especially in the fact that, you know, Collins is still dealing with a number of guys, not dealing, but he still has a number of guys that were recruited under Johnson uh, and, and came to play uh, under that triple option. So, you know, that's a, there's a whole mindset. You've just got it. You've got to yeah. come out of. So you know, yeah, George y'all's Tech, new coach came in and was like, we're going to throw the ball. And they were like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> you talk about, Pat, like this one backwards yeah <laughs> no, the, only, the only passing it. the only passing was always backwards um they, 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 he just brought rugby players in backwards i've seen worse i mean I, it was, <laughs> y'all pissed people off with that back in the day hey, i totally agree some up, that's true. yeah that's true who was the who was at, was it was it citadel who used to run the yeah the option all the time yep. yeah yeah so it, it, they, you don't see it all the time, and that's one of those things. I, I don't blame that coach being like, to our advantage. But you, have it, but you have to add it as part of your arsenal. You can't, you can't constantly run the triple option. If you want a well-rounded offense, you, it includes 15% of, of the option. That's it. 15%. Yeah. yeah, it takes more than one running back and one right wide receiver, too. Yeah, so exactly. That's South Carolina yeah. fans know. Game's so much different. It just doesn't work the same way it used to. No, right. no, it doesn't. It's 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 a much more physical game than it was. And and you know, and, and and now penalties get handed out left and right so quickly that it's just, you know, it's it's odd. Um, you could run by the quarterback and tap him on the helmet and get a roughing the passer in the NFL now. If he's not That's looking, yeah. <laughs> if, he's, if he's not looking, if he is, if he, if he can't defend himself from the tap, uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the point. You, you saw the the reason um, Drew Brees is out, right? That guy put his weight on him. It oh, would it, it would have it would have hurt, right? But it wasn't his whole body. He kind of like rolled off of him, but. I think Drew Brees is old enough. Something popped in his chest, and he's like, "I'm going to sit this one out for a minute." I think he has a collapsed lung. Oh, really? So he must have really did like that when he rolled off. He must have really got Pretty him. Pretty sure there. I saw he had a collapsed lung. I, I hope that's right. <laughs> but yeah. that was a that was a big dude who got him. But I didn't think I didn't think it was rough in the passer when I saw it because he, you fall, you fall. Right? That's what you're doing. It's you're not tackling in- someone. So. <laughs> You're going to the ground with them. Sometimes yeah. it's difficult to not have your body weight land on their body when you're yeah. going full speed, you know. And some of those plays are just too too quick to make that decision and call a yeah. penalty on it. I hate yeah, it. There's, yeah, they're saying that Breeze is currently dealing with multiple rib fractures, a punctured lung, and a shoulder injury. So he, I told you something popped in his chest. <laughs> he, he's on the injured reserve. <laughs> I I suspect we will not see Drew Brees again this season. We may not see Drew Brees on the field again. That's whatever. I'll tell you what though, Taysom Hill looked really good today. Yeah. Did you watch? Did you watch? He's. He, I watched. Well, we live in Columbia, so we so we have to suffer through the Panthers. But um, yeah. sorry. Boo though. on you, Barrett. Hey, look. Who's I, that bear? I'm <laughs> I'm from a different state. Uh, I, I get. I've been here. Let me see. I have actually. Yeah. I, I, I admit I have been here for half my life. I have now lived in South Carolina for half my life, but uh, still, I, I mean, I will root for the Panthers if they make it to the Super Bowl. I will be right there next to you, Zach, on that very slight possibility. It's not this year. I mean, oh, I've only ever had you and uh, one other friend of mine who's a diehard Falcons fan. You two are just the reason I don't like them. <laughs> what mike doesn't know is that zach the last two seasons zach and i have placed a bet that whichever team if a team wins both games then if the falcons win both games then zach has to fulfill a a bet to me a debt to me or and if carolina wins two games then he has to i have to owe him a debt um Right, this right. was the first season that Zach did not want to make that bet because the last two seasons, the Falcons have gone four and zero against the Panthers. So what one season you lost your beard. And then the second season you had to wear a, a, a jersey. Wear your stupid jersey. And if, <laughs> if, if Zach were to call me on the phone right now, that happy image of Zach wearing a Falcons <laughs> jersey is what comes up every single time. I love it. 
That's um, never going. I wouldn't assume. Ever. And, uh, <laughs> until until he but decides to make another bet, I, with, and then I'll put I him can, in another Falcons jersey. I can dig up the bet you made with our boss, where you're having to wear a super tight Clemson jersey, right? Yeah, you know what? And that's uh, uh, that that's the, I, I have issue with that one because <laughs> initially when we made this bet, the person that offered up the jersey said, "No, no, no, my son wears like a two X. No, her son wears a large." I somehow. <laughs> Somehow, and, and it's, it's not, oh, it, yeah. it was the it was the most fitted uh, I've ever been. <laughs> you should you should have just taped it to yourself, like on the front. Like I'm not wearing this. <laughs> I I was supposed to wear it the whole day, but it was it was cutting off my breathing, and uh, I felt like Drew Brees. To be completely honest with you, <laughs> uh, I want to we bring it back all the way back around. We were, we were talking about Taysom Hill. Yeah, that's who they kept comparing Doty to last night oh okay. they were like 100 percent. the announcers kept going he's like taste taste hill 2.0 i'm like i, I guess that no i mean the dude that kid is big he's he's pretty muscular for a freshman and he was making runs throwing it i was just like okay taste him hill it is I just think we need that so bad on our offense. Somebody that's able to get out of the pocket and run when they need to. And I mean, you know, Colin Hill, that if that line collapses even a little bit, he can't he can't get go anywhere. He's just going down with everybody else. Yeah. Can't even can't even get around the tackle to just to roll out of the pocket and make a throw. He's just standing. He didn't there. even throw it away. He no. just he's like, Oh, they're here they come, lay down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like all he has on his mind is don't fumble, which I mean, I guess that's a good thing, but also we need just need some athleticism back there somebody that's where we've succeeded right i mean with garcia you had him how hung are over are you today yeah. and he could halfway run the ball if he had to he just threw his weight at somebody and ran head first like planking i don't i don't not good for the brain guy well, but then um, when connor shaw came in and he added that element of get out of the pocket look do your reads one more yeah, time I've okay i'll go and that's exactly what Doty was able to do. He could step back, make reads, and then get out of the pocket Aaron Rodgers-like and make a throw. And that's what I look at. He, he didn't just take off. He made sure to check down one more time, see who's open again. I love it. I'll take it. I love it. I'll take Man, it. He's, he's just so young. I don't see any reason we don't stick with him and develop him at least these last couple games this season. I mean, it does, And like I said, he was having fun. <laughs> that's what we need, especially at this point with all the – negativity surrounding mm. every aspect of the program at this moment somebody with, with a smile is good to see for sure and then javon kinlaw tweeting out south carolina's fans are the worst on yeah, my soul man. like that's then childish then I, you know better oh he, he says, shouldn't have done that he says and then that I saw he's video never video played alabama uh-huh he says he says that like he's never been to an alabama game <laughs> worst fans yeah those he's I don't know why he said that. They booed him when his picture came up on the uh, video board yesterday at the game in the stadium. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're in the Gamecocks in the NFL, and he came up, and they were booing him. He needed to – that's so childish. That's so that. childish. You can't do that. Even yeah. Melvin Ingram was like, like, go get Shane Beamer. He didn't come out and say, like, oh, childish Gamecock fans. Losing's losing. That's not fun. Right. Exactly. Well, and if you've noticed, there's a little bit of a, a difference between – the Muschamp era players saying things on social media and then the Spurrier era players saying things on social media. They have like two different messages. It's, you know, the, the Muschamp era seems like they're trying to attack the fans for being upset because we're not, we're just not winning games. Facts are the facts. And then the Spurrier era, because they've been there, they've done that. They want to go get somebody that's actually going to win games and they're not blaming the fans. You know, it's, I think That's it was just a big uh, culture difference between the two. It really was. I need to turn around. And, and the fact is, Debo, Kinlaw, players like that, you guys were great players, good players that showed out for us. But you were the only ones. We were still losing when you guys were there. Right, exactly. Uh, I mean, so – Exactly. We didn't boo you. We cheered on you. We just wanted everyone else to get up to that level. And I think it's kind of unacceptable to have Shy Smith sitting out there a couple years with Debo, and he wasn't doing anything. You right. and then when it's your turn by yourself, you're now you're showing out. 
that doesn't work for me. You need you need two to three wide receivers who are going to be they're going to catch it. When I throw it to them, they're going to run their routes. They're going to they're going to juke them. They're going to you know hit the sticks and go. Like and you don't have that. Yeah. You don't have Our, a, you, you have a semi reliable tight end. We lived off tight ends in the Spurrier era as well. Oh, yeah. Tory Gurley and stuff like that. Absolutely. Justice Cunningham, Mr. Irrelevant. That's Jared I mean Jared Cook. Cook. Yeah. Who is it's yeah, it's no, t- tight ends are you need those. And like I said, you had these you were great players on terrible teams. We were not <laughs> winning. We we won nine wins and even Muschamp said, Well, hold on and like he, he came out and even said he was like don't expect this we're still rebuilding don't don't right. set the bar up here and i don't think mo- i know i didn't i can't speak for everybody i was like yeah nine wins that's awesome let's k- continue but it started rolling downhill kind of quick right. yeah, i mean i think when they went nine and three that year everybody kind of knew it was overachieving for sure yeah but just the way it kept sliding backwards year like the years after that and now this year is just you know it's all gone downhill so wow. i don't how know that i think the change needed to be made how know? many yeah. how many it more did. games how many more games south carolina have for the rest of the season i know georgia's what next two. weekend two more games georgia and then kentucky and or is and kentucky, I, the last one the kentucky game is the last one i believe okay okay is I think, let me check real quick there is no is there are have, I think Georgia might be the last one. I don't know. Are there any bowl <laughs> games this year? There are bowl games and they're letting more people or more teams into bowls. I don't know exactly what the criteria is that they're using, but I know it's yeah. not the same. You have to win what is it? I think usually five or six games you have to win to mm, get in. Six games, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. they're gonna be letting they're gonna be letting teams with worse records than that in, but I don't know how bad. You know, I don't know. Like if we're if we go, to eight, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we're going to a bowl game. Are you? Um, are you? Are you trying to tell me that there is hope for Georgia Tech in a bowl game? Yeah, well, there just might be. I don't know. There just might be. Yeah, you're welcome. You're playing South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that one. I may. We may have to watch that one with a crowd. <laughs> I tell you what. I will. I will put it on the projector. Uh, on the garage door outside we'll, we'll have a bonfire and we'll do that one if that's how, how that goes yeah georgia's next week and then we finish with kentucky on the fifth okay okay did did georgia pull it out against mississippi state or they won they by seven yeah oh, wow that was a shootout for a minute i mean yeah 31 24 wow uh, mississippi state snuck up on a couple teams this year and then they also played terrible also well weird. they're doing that air raid i don't know how mike leach's offense is gonna i mean it's clearly worked right they beat lsu and stuff but right. and it was working against georgia I, I just don't think georgia is as good as everyone's making it out to be we can just wash this year away if everybody would like to we can all agree that we don't Honestly, <laughs> teams I, are getting can't can, yeah. i think that's potentially why i haven't paid as much attention to college football this year because i just don't I, I haven't really considered it to be a real football year for college. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel real, you know, well, as a game clock fan, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can just act like it never happened. We're sitting around waiting for basketball to start because our squad should be kick ass. Yeah. Doesn't, I think they're going to be good. Coming up quick. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say basketball starting up now. Basketball is going to be playing in empty stadiums. I mean, in empty arenas, correct? I actually think colonial life got approved for about 3,500. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Nobody, nobody in the first five rows, I don't think, um, closest okay. to the floor. And then I think they got approved for about 3,500 fans at the uh, men's and women's games. So for so the, the women's, that would be awesome. For the women, be spread out. For the women's games, uh, or for at least for the women's team, are they, they currently are starting the season at what number? One number for the one. first time. That's number one. Because yep. ultimately, first time ever. They would have, they would have likely, gone because they took the they they were they were at least deemed the southeastern conference champion because based on record and, and how many teams right. they beat but um but they very easily could have been moving on to their second national championship when all this ended yeah yeah second think, national title yeah. i think it was very likely that they were going to end up playing oregon in the oh. national championship game last year and uh oregon and Carolina fans were going back and forth on Twitter for a while after that saying, claiming the national championship because 
Oregon had that one really good girl, Sabrina and we, I and SQ or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was like coached by Kobe Bryant and everything. So it was like a big deal. But yeah, I think those two were on a collision course last year. Oregon would have lost. I, South Carolina I, was taking everyone's ass to school. Leah Boston. She's oh, she's a, she was a uh, player of the year, right? I think so. Uh, I mean, and now we just got the number one recruiting class again, I think, Don Staley mm-hmm. did. So maybe the football program i'd ask her how to run the program i don't know absolutely <laughs> have her down there with a little mask on and some better, better just... a couple different jobs well, <laughs> yeah. well if you can somehow figure out how to decrease the size of the field by by two-thirds down down to just a third and then and then have oh, she could she could deal with she could deal with 10 yards at a time she <laughs> she, she would take it like she's right. like i can work in this confined space get from there to there Let's, well here's how we do it all you do is you take out the dribbling and you add more passing. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Pass it. Old, original basketball rules. No dribbling. No <laughs> dribbling. We, <laughs> we, we now call that ultimate Frisbee rules. <laughs> <laughs> ultimate Frisbee rules. It really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, I guess now what about Gamecock uh, boy, uh, men's basketball? What are, we, what are we looking at there? I think, um, well, the, it's funny because the SEC – media or whatever picked them i think to finish eighth in the conference this year they always pick the gamecocks to finish way lower than they should and frank martin's team have always um, overachieved whatever they've said sure i think that this is uh potentially the best well of course outside of the final four one but outside of that team this might be the best um talent wise that they've had in a while because you've got seventh seven woods coming back Yep. AJ Lawson is back. Keyshawn Bryant has another year of experience. Um, I think those three are going to pretty much carry the majority of the load for the Gamecocks. And I think it's a pretty solid team. I definitely expect them to make the tournament this year. That's what hurt last year whenever they ended the season is we were on that where what's going to happen what's going to happen through the sec tournament south carolina could could have made that push to get into the, at least the nit level of, of competition because they were For beating sure. kentucky on buzzer buzzer beaters with cousins and stuff like it's it that hurt you knew the ladies like you knew where they were going like y'all right. got this go the men's team was kind of building that little bit of momentum i felt like and legs chopped out from underneath you so yeah uh i think i don't know with seventh woods coming back i he's a really good defender i heard him talking on the radio the other day about him being like a Dwayne notice kind of defender back when he was playing with cindarius thornwell and those two the way they work together i feel like aj lawson and seventh woods can kind of be similar to that or at least i'm, I'm hoping that can be the case we'll see and didn't seventh woods sit out for two years uh was it two years i i don't because he wasn't allowed to play last year he was yeah like, here he didn't and did he sit and, out a year at north carolina he might have it was something like that like it was something weird where he we had him for a minute but he couldn't play for it felt like a seat maybe he was hurt and then or, or couldn't sat out and then was hurt or something like that i don't know yeah, it felt yeah. like he's been there and we're like please bring him out it's <laughs> yeah. time and and, and this a- is the year here he comes he was able to be with the team and stuff on the bench last season right, right? yeah so right he, yeah he's yeah. actually been with the program and actually able to practice all last year just not play yep. so I, you know i don't think he's gonna have a big learning curve this year he should come in Mm-mm. And, and be ready to go so it should be good N- knows frank frank martin's style has played with the guys literally all practices i mean, yeah, I mean he should he, yeah he should be right there he was a big deal coming out of high school he was very very highly recruited from a lot of different really good schools so yeah you know, i think people kind of forgot about who he was because when he went to north carolina he got a little bit buried on their depth chart because you know north it's north carolina, carolina. <laughs> yeah. i think coming back here and, and getting to be kind of one of the main guys i think we're going to see good things for him this year that's exciting in, in south carolina is kind of one of those teams when it comes to basketball that where you if you go play south carolina especially in cla you can lose mm-hmm. no matter who you are you can lose and that's kind of how the football team used to be that's like uh when we went into the final four every team at least at some point i don't think marquette had it in their head that they they could just handedly beat us but Duke definitely thought they could take us and they had yeah. us for a little bit. And, you know, 
Dwayne so noticed and all the boys showed up. Yeah. I mean, everybody, Baylor. Yeah. And they had like the tallest dudes I've ever seen in my life <laughs> playing on their team. <laughs> for sure. like playing mid I'm very excited. Football. <laughs> I'm excited for that. And I'm excited for South Carolina baseball to take off. Um, yeah. That the pitching recruiting class we got for them is like sixth and sixth in the nation, something like that. They're, yeah. And they're doing good. I was watching the little cam uh, on Facebook live feed of the Garnet and Black World Series. Yeah, that was fun. Too. Yeah, yeah. It was good. They look, I mean, they look good out there too. I, w- I am wondering a little bit about basketball, how the the lack of attendance, lack of fans is going to affect the game. Got, you know, sometimes college basketball, they feed off of that energy so much more, right. it seems like, because it's smaller, it gets louder, and it's – I don't know. I guess maybe it's just going to take a little bit of that, I don't know, intensity out of it a little But Well, the well, fans, well they better the let Gamecock Jesus possible. come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got to get a ticket <laughs> every time he, he automatically he gets a ticket period Absolutely. he'll get everyone fired up <laughs> you know who we're talking about barrett no <laughs> you don't know who game you don't know gamecock jesus you you, uh, ha- you have seen him he wears a headband and he has a long beard and he's always up there stomping and waving his flag and the flag cheering down. Yeah, yeah, he's I, going at it. I've man. seen him. I didn't. I didn't realize he actually had a name. But you know, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes I, sense. I, I think. I think they even they paid when we went to, to the final four run. He got. He had like a GoFundMe or someone paid for him to go to those games and be there. Gotcha. <laughs> so, gotcha. Legend. Gotcha. Legend. Absolutely. That's pretty good. We need to. We need to find him to get him as a guest as well. Huh? We'll Great. have you back too, Mike. <laughs> that would. That would be the guest to get right there. Well, the, the last thing that I'll bring up is that it looks like uh, the uh, Columbia Fireflies are, are very close to having been picked. I haven't seen an update yet on, on, on which team has actually bought out the Fireflies. Um, it's either going to be Cincinnati or Cleveland. Uh, my preference would be Cleveland, um, although I have seen a lot of really good pitchers come through Cincinnati lately. That would be fun to go watch. But uh, my preference would be Cleveland. I was, I was a Cleveland fan just under the Braves, uh, just under the Cubs for, I don't know, most of my, most of my high school career and, and, and whatnot. So um, I'm just glad it's not the Mets anymore because I, I really had a strong distaste. <laughs> I would go to the games. I wouldn't pay any attention to the games. It was, it was a $5 yeah. cover for, for the, the largest club in, in Columbia, but uh, but I am excited that uh, major league, I'm sorry, minor league baseball has announced that there will be, as of right now, a full schedule of games this season and that Columbia uh, will have a new team that they are uh, farming as. So, Well, um, Rob Schneider was on the Fireflies. Yeah, I, I saw that. Field this weekend. Yeah. He, <laughs> Rob Schneider, yeah, Rob Schneider, Friday night, uh, did a comedy stand-up show uh, from the field of, uh, uh, of Firefly stadium of Columbia. Well, what's the name of the stadium? Uh, uh Segra, it's Segra park now it's Segra park. Now it used to be sprint. Or Segra. Spirit. <laughs> Spirit or something. So, so yeah, they, they had what they had a limited amount of people in there to see that, I guess. Then. Yeah, yeah, they did. They had someone a, sent me a video. Uh, that's kind, of, that's kind of cool though. They were in, uh, they were, he, uh, he asked for like a glass of wine or something and they actually brought him red wine in a ballpark cup and he, <laughs> he tasted it and he's like, this is great ballpark wine. <laughs> it cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, Rob. No good yeah, cheap here. When I saw the Mets and Fireflies weren't going to be uh, affiliated anymore, but I guess that's a little more common than I thought. It happened. It happens. Like yeah, it happens fairly often. You, you see, like, yeah. you know, for a long time, even even the columbia bombers at one point they were associated with the braves then they were associated with the mets um and then i I think yeah and then and then at one point mark Harmon, that's right uh tv star mark Harmon. um but then at some point uh, i guess uh about 15 20 years ago uh the the bombers decided that they were uh, the bombers got purchased by the uh boston red sox and boston red sox uh, the Braves had abandoned Greenville, so Braves moved out of Greenville. Boston wanted to move them to Greenville, so the Bombers moved to Greenville, became the drive. We gained the Bomber, uh, the the Blowfish, but that's not a—they're not affiliated with any major league, any major league teams. 
but you know, now the blow. These names are awful. <laughs> No, we talked there. about it last time. They're the worst. Oh, the, the minor league baseball names are some of the most interesting and mud cats. Just the most oh, wild man. things you can think of. You know, they really, really, the I fire miss the Capital City Bombers. I mean, they I thought they had a cool logo. Yeah, I, I that was cool. That was, was kid. Yeah, uh, fair. The Bombers were cool. I went to cool? a few of the Fireflies ones. The stadium's cool. Yeah, I like the yeah. stadium a lot. You got the bow tie. We ball lost in it back. this year, last year. Yeah. The Gamecocks. <laughs> yeah. To Clemson. It would have made sense for Atlanta to try and link I, up with them geographically, right? I mean, so Atlanta's doing, a, Atlanta does the same thing that, that the Mets are currently doing. Atlanta has a lot of their teams in the state of Georgia or, or in the Southeast, in Mississippi. So what New York's Miss, idea uh, was basically, you know, Mississippi, I don't, I don't, you know, Atlanta's got the Mudcats. Atlanta, the Gwinnett Stripers, uh, yes. they're right there near Lake Lanier. They have the Firefly colors, too. Yeah. Uh, you got the Rome Braves. You got the Mississippi Braves. Um, but with with New York, they're essentially doing the same thing. All of the Mets teams will now be in the state of New York. Uh, so they won't oh, have yeah. any team affiliations outside of the state of New York, which, you know, the Braves have the Gwinnett Braves. Well, Stripers now, but they, but they moved Bear, to – your brother's back at it with the Atlanta crackers. <laughs> so, uh, but, but the brave, the idea is that if, if the Braves have the Gwinnett Braves or the Gwinnett stripers that are right up the road, that if, if somebody goes down, it's very easy to get somebody from, from triple a over to the majors very quickly. So Absolutely. essentially what the Mets are doing as well. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I know Mike is on a, on a time crunch, uh, so we will let him go here in just a second. Um, before we go to a break, I just uh, I want to I want to mention we have a new sponsor. All right. Uh, I want to take just a quick moment and mention the new sponsor, ThePaintedMoment.com. That is ThePaintedMoment.com. So check this out. Have you ever taken a photo with your phone or digital camera that you would think would be an amazing oil canvas painting? Well, now there's a website that's ready to take your photos and turn them into digital painted moments. This is how it works. Visit thepaintedmoment.com, follow the instructions, and your digital photo will be enhanced and returned to you with links on where you can have the image printed to canvas or whatever else you'd like to do with it. And right now, thepaintedmoment.com is offering you a special. Normally, each photo enhanced is $85, but till Christmas, only $65 an image. We already have a couple of these enhanced photos around the house. Uh, thepaintedmoment.com. It makes a great gift. Create a painted moment in time from your digital photos. It's thepaintedmoment.com. Seriously, you're going to want to check them out today and take advantage of the $20 saving per photo. Thepaintedmoment.com. That was a mouthful. <laughs> fantastic job. All right. You painted it fantastically. Beautiful. <laughs> Mike, thank you very much for joining us again. Please uh, rate, yeah, review, guys, subscribe. Yeah, thank you, Mike. To, uh, the Cocky Talk. It's uh, Cocky Talk uh, again. I've I listen to them on uh, the uh, Apple Podcast, so please make sure to check them out. Um, you can find. Uh, we'll add links to our Twitter and everything, just to tell everybody where they're at. But uh, Mike, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. We you hope guys, you'll, uh, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. We hope we'll uh, we'll be able to get you on again very soon. Um, yes, sir. And, thank you. Zach and I are going to take a quick break. We will be back in just a couple minutes. Thank you very much. You follow your dreams. You might find the forest dead in the tree. I'm just going to go ahead and, and break in because uh, this song is pretty long. <laughs> are you going to cry? I, it's... This is so. I'm just gonna say this is off the this is off the Tom Petty and uh, Tom Petty Wildflower and all the rest album. And if you if you if you're a Tom Petty fan at all, if you listen to Tom Petty, you know even just for his hits, you you really need to download this album because it's it's fantastic. I I was I was excited just when I heard that it was coming out, and it's a bunch of it's it's a bunch of recordings either home recordings or uh and wildflower is f by and by and large one of the best tom petty albums outside of the stuff that he did with the heartbreakers and whatnot but tom petty is just i, I don't know I, and he's one of those artists that i easily imitate too so 
when he was great in the postman. That's that's true. He was great in the postman. Zach, it's it's a weird how I know all that stuff. <laughs> like, it's Tom I'm Petty. Gonna, he was I'm, in the postman. I'm not gonna say it's weird. Uh, it, but I mean, there's look. People look at me and they hear some of the things I say, and they're like, "God, does he know any more useless information?" <laughs> Full of it. <laughs> I uh, again, I want to thank uh, Mike Dillon for joining us this week. Again, he is the host that was of great. A, uh, a podcast called Cocky Talk, C O C K Y Talk, Cocky Talk. Uh, again, I, I listen to him on uh, Apple Podcasts. So make sure that uh, you you definitely subscribe to him and listen, especially if you are a sports fan of any sort. Uh, he and his brother get into it and talk about all sorts of things, and it's 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 it it. it I, for me, it keeps me up to date on a lot of the stuff that I likely am not reading about or, or you know, conversations. It, it, it just, it's all around just, uh, it's entertaining. Uh, and, and again, Mike, Mike and his wife, Jessica, they play on my kickball team uh, every week. Uh, very, very, uh, one of the best couples. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun. We enjoy having them and playing with them. Hey, I, I was going to ask you, before we get into a lot of the political, well, I'm not going to say politics. I have, I have a little bit of politics. Actually, I'll be completely honest. I was going to try and keep this episode almost completely politics free, uh, but that's hard to do. Um, or we get on this R- Rudy Giuliani train of horseshit hair. Yeah. yeah. It is it is utterly insane. But first, Zach, I wanted to ask you, um, when you're toothpaste, when you get to the end of the toothpaste, how, how far do you generally let the toothpaste go before before you move over to a new a new uh a new thing yeah uh dude i'll get that i'll get that bad boy like flat as possible and i'll like you know how it's like a little dome at the top sure. i'll sit there and squish squish it like bend it under to make sure i get every inch of it out of there until like literally where i'm pushing and i can't get anymore then yeah. then the then the tube is done i want to show you, this is just i think people cut tubes in half this is how cheap yeah. I, this is you have to are you getting up in the in the dome oh. of it are you getting it out of there yeah there's there's none left there's it's a there's a oh. vacuum there's now a, a vacuum the, in here like that yeah you open that stuff starts getting sucked in yeah. Yeah, that's right that's right <laughs> you open, there will be a there will be a paradox and 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 highly likely there will be an event horizon if i'm able to open this back up <laughs> if you're a sci-fi fan that, you know that means <laughs> that much yes <laughs> you'll spaghetti file your toothbrush when you put it next to it exactly yeah speaking of uh sci-fi um couple of things uh, did you see this week that the the, the hbo max has announced that uh, wonder woman 1984 is going straight to hbo max how excited am i getting that? hbo max i want it really bad it's just it's, just, it's too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't it's cool you'll you'll be you know you'll be able to watch it somewhere um yeah no december 25th I could, I, Go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say I could buy it one time from demand. Well, it's not. It's only. It's they're not doing demand. It's theaters and max. Oh, right? I am sure that it will also be available on demand. I'm sure you'll be able to go on Amazon or something like that, or or Plex, and uh, and watch it off of Plex. So that's. <laughs> or I'll I'll sit in the theater with my mask on and be like, we're not getting HBO Max. There aren't any theaters open. Like they keep saying these movies are going to go to movie theaters. Yeah. They keep saying that they're going to release this stuff to movie theaters. There are not any theaters in Columbia that are open that I know of. Like I, I mean, Regal's closed. AMC is closed. AMC is on the verge of, of filing for bankruptcy. bankruptcy. Um, yeah. So uh, wonder Woman's going to be released December 25th at no extra charge. If you have HBO max. So they're going to drop that one there. I think they just recently added the three dark Knight series movies. Um, to HBO Max, I did see those out there. Um, the let me see. Also, Disney is released. Well, Pixar and Disney are releasing the movie Soul. That will be released on December twenty fifth, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, Wait, is it Mulan extra or is it normal? It is going to be normal. It's not going to be Disney. Okay. Premiere. So, um, I did also see that coming in April, uh, Disney is going to have a uh, eighteen plus section. Uh, because we're going to see some of more, uh, some more of these Fox movies like Logan. Uh, we're going to see uh, the uh, the three Deadpool movies. You have Deadpool one and two, and then Once Upon a Deadpool. So you're going to we're going to see all three of those get dropped onto a Disney Plus here soon, as well as it looks as though 
uh, come yeah, April. You're saying what I'm about to say. <laughs> Go for you could say. I'll let you. I'll let you break it. Deadpool three is official. They have a new writer. It is. That is. That is. That is it. That's not what I was going to say, but that is. That is true. Uh, <laughs> no, I was going to say Black <laughs> Widow is going to be replete, uh, released to Disney Plus premiere or Disney premiere or whatever. Uh, come April is 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 the rumor. There's not been an official announcement, but there's been there's been too much dropping lately to uh, to ignore it. So that is coming. Well, uh, and I heard they're going to release uh, the Black Widow is going to contain because you know David Arbor is playing uh, uh, Red uh, whatever. Yeah, the Red the, the Russian Basic- Captain America. Yeah, well, and they're going to explain like the Russians' attempt at Captain America and David Arbor, if you know him, I, like of course Stranger you do. Things. Chief Hopper, yeah, of yeah. uh, Hellboy, uh, he yes. he he is very an unfit Captain America, and I think that's fantastic. <laughs> so I want to see like where he's talking about like well, he was what it went wrong. Like I find that like being like the is he Red Baron? Is that what he is? Yeah, I I, I don't remember. I I I honestly don't. I I that's. For me, most of the uh, mo- most of the the Black Widow stuff is pretty deep cuts. Like it, none of Black Widow stuff is mainstream for me, so I I I, I don't know. Well, but- they they ruined KG Beast and uh, using him as like a background character for all the stuff. Yes, yeah. I was I, like, I that's KG Beast, the guy who pretends to do the mopping, and he's just secretly moving around. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Omega Red, that's who he is. He's Omega Red, your brother. Omega Red, Red. yes, yeah. Omega Red, I don't know. It's Red something. I had one part, right? Uh, Let me see. Also, sci fi, sort of, or sci fi esque, or sci fi ish. Um, President and CEO Gwen Shotwell uh, says that SpaceX is simultaneously building a fleet of uh, reusable orbital Dragon spacecraft designed to support a range of NASA and commercial astronaut and cargo launches over the next five to 10 years. Uh, And uh, let's see, speaking shortly after SpaceX is successful, November 15th, this was just last week, Operation, uh, Operational Astronaut Support uh, launch debut, uh, also known as Crew-1, Shotwell revealed that the company is already in the process of building several more crew and upgraded Cargo Dragon spacecraft on top of the vehicles already in late stage of preparing for the first and second flights. So it, it, it looks as though SpaceX is, is, even though they are a private commercial company, it looks like they're our go-to for almost all of our space ventures that we're going to be going to. Oh, and, and by the way, once Biden takes office, are, are we abandoning this um, Space Force thing? I don't think we can. You think we're, we're, we're in it for good now? <laughs> that, yeah. That's going to be part of Trump's legacy is Space Force. Is it, is it really? Is that, is that change, really? Change change the name just to piss them off <laughs> call well, it you- star treks and they're all truckers <laughs> i feel like you have to change the name anyway because netflix already owns the copyright to the name space force because space they force. copyrighted it when they did the tv show uh with with um steve carell and uh and Ma- uh, malkovich so uh i i feel like they already you you have to change the name to something else i mean unless copyrights can just be taken away i don't know um i think your brother is now patronizing us because yes we know red skull becomes the keeper of the of the soul stone we've all seen in game i feel like my brother's always patronizing me um <laughs> so i uh okay since since we're discussing that um uh comic books and and whatnot we're gonna move into part of the topic that we discussed last week which was uh, we did bring up uh, Black Panther during the show last week, and um, ultimately, as, as the fact that we discussed it, it comes to light that it's being discussed yeah. exactly how things are going to work out with uh, with T'Challa um, being written out of Black Panther two. Apparently, um, they are beginning the process of of uh, they're planning the moments uh, to have T'Challa written out of Black Panther two. Uh, before the story starts so we will not see t'challa die we will be we will basically start at some point after uh in which uh shuri will then assume the role as black panther and queen of wakanda uh permanently um there are no details beyond that uh but the film will uh will likely release on time may of 2022 
Um, the film will likely pay respect to the actor Chadwick Boseman. Um, there are uh, there were rumors that Shuri was going to resurrect uh, Eric Killmonger uh, with some sort of vibranium tech or something like that, but uh, it appears that'd that have been cool though. That'd have been yeah. rad. Yeah, but that. But that I, I like the film fatale version of of Black Panther. I think that's. I think that'll be amazing because yeah. she's Tony Stark from Wakanda, right? Exactly. So she could What's like, this? like she Tony? could she could be like, Black Panther suits fly to me, or or you know what I mean? Like, make them panthers flying through the jungle, crawling through trees, like in a wispy kind of way. Like, if if you only go that. based on what you saw in. Uh, the Avengers and Black Panther and 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 basically the the whole MCU. If you if that's all if that's your only reference to Marvel's universe, then then you already know that she is far smarter than both Bruce Banner and uh, 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 Tony Stark because you know, when they were trying to remove the stone from uh, from Vision's head, like they she even asked, well, why didn't you do it this way? And he goes, we didn't think about it. So, you know, we, we already know that, that, that she is by far the most intelligent person that we've seen in the MCU on, uh, you know, on film. I think there's, she might be more patient than Tony Stark. I don't know if she's more intelligent because in the time. comics, well, there, I think her name was Riri Williams or something like that. It was also a, a black woman, child, teenager who takes over the mantle of Iron Man. And she, at, at that moment, was the only person that I know of that was actually more intelligent than Tony. Okay. Which could, Tony's gone now, spoiler right. alert. But <laughs> if that happened too, that'd be, that'd be cool. Because you, really you can't do, you can't not have an Iron Man of some sort. And you're not, no one wants goop in a suit flying around as iron maiden no uh, I, don't, I don't want it <laughs> i just i don't i thought we were gonna have iron maiden starting up whenever she first started and then she shows up in end game you're like all right goop Go <laughs> move along <laughs> he's talking about he's talking about pepper pots in case in case yeah. you're not you're not aware um so but that's exciting so shuri is is it sounds like the script is likely to go the direction of maintaining the same storyline that we had before um there are hints that there we possibly could see storm from the x-men show up in black panther 2 uh because at one point i think storm was married to chachala uh which you know they're they're gonna try and find at this point i feel like and i i i'm not i'm not concerned that that's what's going to happen but i i do fear a little bit that they are going to try and crowbar these X-Men characters into the series, you know, into the MCU somehow. Um, I'm really hoping yeah, but you don't have to. You well, they don't have to, you know. You can have an event, you can have an Avengers movie that starts out with like who the new Avengers will be, which is Vision and stuff like that, depending on how Wanda and Vision goes. Yeah. Um, and then it cycles off into Oh, here's the mutants. Here's yeah. uh and please, please, please use the cast of the newer X-Men movies. I yeah. think those are great. First class. You're talking about Fastbender and uh um, yeah. Um yeah, I, yeah. I, I, the the beast. I, I completely <laughs> I, yeah, I completely agree. I think I think that is an outstanding cast for mm. for the X-Men. And 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 frankly, there's no reason not to use them. I don't see them doing anything that would potentially keep them out you know um have you have you also seen the uh have you seen the latest trailer for uh justice league the snyder cut have you seen that yet yep yeah yep um that looks awesome uh plex i'm still not getting hbo max uh your brother is also talking about adam warlock showing up in guardians of the galaxy i don't care about adam warlock yeah, I, I I know it's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I just don't. Uh, well, I I think the Give potential. Nova. Is your your tr- yeah, I agree. Give, yeah, Nova Nova Squad. You want Nova Squad? I want Beta Ray Bill. Um, I want to see. Yes. You know, I I 
there is there are there are so many characters that we are likely going to see across phase four and phase five with marvel and i get this a lot of this is just nerd speak i i get it uh and, and it's gonna have it's gonna have a lot of people google searching and then it's gonna have the rest of us going and digging in our long boxes <laughs> for the issues where like where did i see him <laughs> exactly exactly well and like you mentioned last week the, with with uh with um uh, the actual civil war had more to do with the war right. against mutants, the the brotherhood and the mutants and whatnot. So it, you know, the, the, there is, and, and it sounds like a lot of uh, what we are leading into with phase four and phase five of the Marvel cinematic universe is we're leading more into the Avengers secret war. So the mm. Kree and 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 whatnot, and their invade the the Kree invasion, the Kree of- and the Immortals. That's bringing on the, the scroll. Oh, yeah. All of the uh, yeah. yes, bring on that whole because I mean that that's the whole reason every you, the Avengers are even you oh, know yeah. like it's it's everything, and you need that, and yeah. then and you get to bring in Beta Ray Bill and all that, and like uh, yes, especially yeah. when, like the thing that was so awesome is. You never expected a Guardian Guardians of the Galaxy movie to be made because right. they weren't the best comics to read. You they they did they they came in and did their thing time to time with the Avengers and stuff like that. But that movie made Star Wars and Marvel like combined. And I left the theater after the first one going, more of that, less of everything else. Yeah. And the fact that um from what I've heard, Guardians three is supposed to involve more of Thor in asgard which yeah. is completely all up in that realm of that i can't wait for and by the way uh chris hemsworth uh, on instagram posted a photo of his he's doing workouts for thor love and thunder yeah he he's bigger than like henry cavill really like he he looks like rock big just, he, just in case henry cavill by the way is currently superman in in the dc cinematic world um yeah. so yeah, yeah so justice league batman v superman the new mm-hmm. i guess i guess the next the next justice league movie supposedly i or no well, he's gonna show up in the uh, what he's gonna show up in the, he, in the black movie he still wants he still wants to keep playing superman right yeah and so they're like so everyone's like ben affleck's done as batman is out he's not he's gonna no. be in flashpoint yeah he's gonna be in flashpoint thank yeah. you and he's they're doing they're doing reshoots right now or they're 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 wrapping up i guess the post credit the post production stuff for um uh, the the snyder cut of the justice league so um that's I, it's i think all the good things are happening in dc's way right now and i think marvel is still holding you know steady with what they do i think i think marvel still holds the top position but the fact that dc was able was was able to say look Yes, we see we, we recognize that all of these things are splintered. Um, you have you have the you have all of these old Batman movies that have been done. You have all of these old Superman characters and super people that have played Superman. We have all the TV shows, Smallville, uh, all of the, the Greg Berlanti TV shows, all of those things are out mm-hmm. there. But the fact that they came out and said it's all part of the same thing. Yeah. There because of the flash. You have the ability to move back and forth between these multiverses, and 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 Flash is the Flash is the guy between those all. So, and and that's what the new Fifty Two was all about when they right. released the new Fifty Two. That was the Fifty Two multiverses at the time. You you can play these games. You can have Robert Pattinson in his universe, dark and gritty, right. and at the same time you got Christian Bale's Batman over there, more stylized like uh for our time right. using current tech then you have brute force dark knightish you know um miller batman miller. yeah it's it, w- when it comes to affleck <laughs> i do have the i do have the problem with they they stuck affleck with the rubber helmet again where it's almost kind of like uh you know in batman forever when val Kilmer's like right yeah out, out of the jet like his neck's all stiff yeah Thank you, Batman. He just turns over. He's like, "You're welcome." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he's flying it. Yeah. They needed they needed it to be more of like the Dark Knight um, with Frank Miller. He wore nothing but nin- like ninja clothes. It was right. cloth with a little bit of armor inside of it, Kevlar type style. Right. And big and brutish and old and just 
Wolf syndrome has him. He he's scarred up. He's ready to go. Yeah, that's still the Batman movie I want to see. I want like if you would have gotten someone as big as The Rock, but not like trying to people's row people as Batman. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been like you know the Frank Miller Batman I want to see. Just old and has had enough and ready yeah. to go at it but i digress i'm I'm excited i'm excited oh. for the robert pattinson batman i, I think that's going to be fantastic admittedly i am and, and you know this i am not as big a dc fan as i am marvel um but i am excited to see exactly what they're going to do because i i am absolutely looking forward to seeing the snyder cut of the justice league the fact that they had to go into reshoots i mean the amount of money that warner brothers invested back into doing the Snyder cut of the justice league is incredible to me. Well, I think HBO helped HBO. They had to yeah. They know they, it was such a fan draw because people were, you know, he, he got almost the entire, he got most of the movie done before what he got fired. And didn't they, did they no, move it, on his daughter, the uh, his daughter committed suicide. Ah, and so he had to quit filming. That's yeah, he had to rough. leave for that well that's so, why he left and then, then joss whedon came in and apparently offended ray fisher very badly um still haven't said what happened with all that but yeah. it, it the, the reason he had to leave was because his daughter had killed herself gotcha well or, or pass i might be wrong about the killing yourself but I, i'm fairly certain that's what it was uh, it's, that's um, that, more information than i had i just knew that zach zach snyder left the production uh and and joss whedon took over um and and I'm not saying that Justice League was great or good. It was, it was, it was okay. It was, it was a. It was, I, I think will, it was just as good as Age of Ultron. I agree. Uh, you know what though? I've gone back and watched Age of Ultron, like after the, the fact, and and the, number, the best thing about Age Ultron, best thing about Age of Ultron is James Spader. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all he did was the voice. But yeah, he was he was really good. But the other thing about Age of Ultron that 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 lead us are are leading us towards Phase Four and Five because you know this Age of Ultron is where we we really get introduced to Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, um, yeah. and and that's part of the basis in which they will eventually get us to Magneto because Magneto is Quicksilver and uh, 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 Scarlet Witch's father. Um, yeah, and that that takes place on his island, that mutant island. That yeah, I oh, got well, now. I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was like Utopia or something like that. But regardless, it was. But but I mean, Scarlet Witch is easily one of the most powerful beings on the planet. Behind you know, in front of Vision, in front of like even Doctor Strange, because. In the comic books, she had the ability to just think it and did away with all of the mutant powers, like did away with all mutants. And then in a blink of yep. an eye, was able to do it again with the human. I mean, like, so so she brought them back. And and so, you know, I, I think that that's part of where this is leading to is eventually somebody's going to have to take down Scarlet Witch. And well, and that's why I, I that's that's literally I like I love Paul Bettany. Let me. Yeah, like, I, agree. I agree. I'm curious about Wanda and Vision, how that's going to go. She is, like you're saying, one of the most powerful in the Marvel Universe outside of like Galactus, yeah, right. which I don't know what she could do with that. He, I mean, he eats worlds. World. But he, DC has the most powerful character of all time. I'll let you guess as to who that could be. No, no matter what, the most powerful. Uh, you're are you talking about Doomsday? Is that nope? Who's who's the most powerful? Who's the most powerful of all comic? Uh, yeah. Doctor Manhattan. Period. Who who fought Doctor Manhattan? You Superman? don't. Oh, okay. You do. <laughs> I don't know Doctor Manhattan. I don't from know. the Watchmen. Oh right. See, okay. See, I'm thinking. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I can see that. I can see that. You, there's nothing you can do. Uh, did you watch the HBO series? Since we're on it, The Watchmen. It's the best television show outside of Game of Thrones Limited I've seen since Game of Thrones has ended. Yeah. 
they just did the one season. No, I have I have not watched it yet. Um, it is on my list. Uh, oh, it hits the racial issue, racial issues like the yeah, um, absolutely. It hits the police brutality, the racial issues, even mask wearing, which was before all this happened. But like, it was for a different reason, really. But Doctor Manhattan is the crux of that show, and you, uh, I can't say any more. If you have not seen it, go watch it. Yeah. It is it is the most mind blowing crazy show and they bring out that kind of like if you've watched the boys the boys is kind of uber violent and has a good story it sure. doesn't have a great story you sure. don't need that violence uh the, watch it watch the watchmen it's a continuation from the original okay like, the movie didn't ever talk about the squid that falls on the the city and all that stuff and this m- makes sure that was like a crux of it as well Sure. It's it's so 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 good. It won it won a couple of Emmys, I believe. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I, I think that's true. I think that's true. Well, we will move from entertainment then before we get done tonight, um, because we're 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 doing well on time, Zach. Who the fuck? Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll go into the politics a little bit. Again, I said this at the beginning. I, I was I was hoping to have a show that was completely politics free, but um, you know, until we get to June uh, January twentieth, I'm afraid that just might not really be an option. Um, so something I found interesting, and I'm not sure if you watched it. Uh, 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 Stephen Colbert had um, uh, Matthew McConaughey on the show this week, um, and and one of the reasons was is because there's rumors that Matthew McConaughey might be considering a run for uh, governor's Texas, uh, the governor of Texas. Um, But he said, I quote, I have no plans to do that right now. McConaughey said when asked uh, by Colbert, he said right now, no, I don't get politics. Politics seems to be a broken business. Politics needs to read be uh, needs to redefine its purpose. And so as a move forward in life, yes, I'm going to consider leadership roles where I can be most useful question mark um i'd love to i'm doing that regardless so it seems as though he's at least considering the idea but right now he's not he's not fully into it and i don't think texas's governorship is up until 2022 i think that they they are on four-year terms last time was in 2018 so um but we could potentially see matthew mcconaughey and i i don't he he's Last watch his instagram videos you're not gonna want him he's kind of crazy it's uh yeah he's I, I love him in movies and stuff uh like interstellar is one of my all-time favorites but, but agreed no uh no you just stay at ut <laughs> yeah. and teach acting please he uh yeah he i i don't know that i could fully back him as the governor of texas but you know, the potential is that he would run as a Democrat and the, to see, I mean, we've discussed this already. Uh, Texas is one of those states that's going to be right behind Georgia and Georgia went blue this time. Uh, Texas. And everyone's moving there. Moving to Texas. It's kind of weird. Everyone's moving. To yeah. Texas. Like, yeah. Like hmm. the people are getting out of California. Like I know Joe Rogan did it. Yeah, there's a true. couple others that like tech texas is is becoming like a like especially austin's kind of like the the diamond in the rough when it comes to yeah, texas as yeah. it is the yeah it's it's kind of your um coachella of texas you you have people out there partying all night and long and they have more liberal views on things I'm not saying it's liberal but they're more liberal yeah um well anywhere you have i don't i don't texas texas a&m generally has a more liberal um population to it uh university of texas same thing houston um you know galveston um corpus christi those the populated areas of texas dallas fort worth those populated areas of texas generally wind up being more liberal um and and you know if it's and, and if you watch, if you get an opportunity, watch Bill Maher this week when he did his new rules, he discussed the idea that people still continue to vote outside of their ideals. They vote for candidates mm-hmm. based on party and not based on the, you know, basically voters are stupid. 
they are not voting based on the issues that affect them the most. They're based purely on who's Democrat and who's Republican. It's uh, well, I found my fault. I found my fault when I, when it came to voting was the bigger picture was what I kind of had a scope on, right? Who, are, who, who should be president, that kind of thing. And then when it came down to like who, who should be superintendent of Lexington district five or something like that, whatever it is, I didn't know these people. And sure. so the next time I go to the polls, I'm going to make sure that I need, I, I need more information. I need to make a more informed vote. I hope the ones that I had to check are, are, are going to do their job. Right. Um, See, that was that i think that's what bothered me most is like i was like damn i don't i don't know that but the information also is one that you have to go out and find who's running then right. you have to go dig even further to find who that person is because they're not out there they're, they're not they're, easily accessible yeah there, and there are there are some really good websites that do go out and gather that information like they will they will send questionnaires to all of the candidates, regardless of what the position is they're running for, they will send question out questionnaires out there so that they can get a good idea of where the candidates stand, especially for nonpartisan positions like Board of Education. Um, those are those are the those are those websites, and and I I can I can direct you to them uh, post you know after after the fact for this yeah. election we just went through, but. There are really terrific websites out there that do give you a breakdown of where these where these candidates stand on different issues. For for the Board of Education, some of the things that I were looking, I was looking at, which you know, I I get sometimes people don't think my opinion's valid, but I was looking at some of the information having to do with how how they feel like we we need to see students. Uh, able to get back into the classroom or how, how, what, what concerns they have with how to make it happen. Also their concerns on how they teach uh, racial justice and, and, and history and things like that. Those were, those were important questions that I saw that were answered. And I based my, my voting based on their answers. None of them, none of them were particularly straight line with exactly how I think, but at least some of them seem to go that direction because they didn't they didn't want to be as radical as i potentially would be on the board of education well um, you, it also gives you a bead on the person to a degree that sure. well i can trust or i feel in my gut or from what i understand it, when it comes to how you're going to handle situation a and b you'll probably go more the way i'd like you to sure more than the way i, I wouldn't and that's the thing like i i I was going through they're going like what i don't there's too many questions here like i I knew that there would be but and and with with this case i was like president next (laughs) yeah not lindsey graham Mm. i I will (laughs) i will fully admit that um you know when it comes to some of the decisions that the they make again i am ultra liberal when it comes to programs that provide or that are available to everyone. So if it comes down to the ability, so, so like school lunch program, uh, free, free, free or low cost school lunch program across the board. I am fully in favor of that because there are some, because, because of the fact that we still live in a society that, that has individuals that fall below the poverty level, but their kids still have to go to school in order, in order for them to be able to go and work, their children have to go to school. So I, I, I recognize that and I feel for that. And, and the potential is, is that our school systems need to budget to allow there to be a free or reduced school program for both lunch and breakfast. And in some cases, even provide them with something to take home for dinner. Okay. Cause ultimately yeah. the potential that those kids may not be getting dinner when they get home. So that's for, we have there. There is no reason we can't. We have the resources for this. We're just not allocating those resources correctly. That's correct. No, opinion. yeah. That's and and my mother is watching. But I remember whenever she would take us to register, even for for high school, that she would be so angry that we're paying all these taxes already and stuff. And then you're you you don't leave there without paying like a hundred and fifty dollars in registration fees and stuff to have your kid go to school if, if i'm remembering correctly like it, it would be expensive on the side of you have to go to school right all right i'm here to register my kid 
oh, you need money now too? Like, hey, is that how it works? Yeah, it's. I'll have to figure it out and and you know a few years for myself but <laughs> that's, that's a fact you go when in the united states when, when in most school districts you take your skid your your kid to go and register them for the next season or the next school year you wind up having mm. to pay all these fees for things as you go through the registration process it's ridiculous I, and i'm not saying that the school I, i'm not blaming it on the schools and, and and ultimately i'm not blaming it on anyone it's just this is the system that's been created this is this is where we're at this is how things happen like this would uh, you say they're the facts of life oh you take the good you take the bad <laughs> take them all and there you have the facts of life um <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure you saw this and, and I'm sure that most of the people that are watching, listening as well, by the way, um, I do want to point this out. Uh, we got, we got some, we got, I got my first merch shirt, uh, available nice. at the nice. all about nothing.com. I've now worn it twice. Uh, potentially y'all go out there and get us buy our merch, yeah. spread the word. And, and, and honestly, if, if, if there's any complaints about the price points, I sincerely apologize. I set those price points as low as possible so that, that I'm not paying for you to have a shirt, <laughs> but, um, but <laughs> they are out there. And honestly, I just, I just want to see people wearing them. I'm not saying everybody, I'm not going to, you know what? I'll be completely honest. It's highly likely that I will never see anybody, but maybe you and Trent and maybe a few of the people that listen. Uh, well, Justin will have them cause we bought them as, as a, <laughs> as a reciprocation exactly as, as I, a piece and i fully uh, yeah. i fully expect that when he comes to do a show and lets us uh lets us be the master of ceremonies for his next show here in columbia that that was <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. at new brooklyn where we'll all be wearing gloves and masks ex- and not because of covid yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I am more than happy to do stand up before his show to as a as an opener that would be uh that would be a lot of fun <laughs> Hey, uh, George's recount is completed, certified, and the governor has certified it. So, um, but <laughs> President Donald Trump's legal team, this all happened on Friday, um, but President Trump's uh, legal team announced on Saturday that it has requested another recount in Georgia to vote uh, for, for all the votes um, in the presidential race after the results of the previous recount showed that Biden had taken the state. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger Uh, A Republican certified the state's election on Friday, showing that Biden had beaten Trump by 12,670 votes um, out of nearly 5 million. So it was an extremely close race. We all recognize that. That's perfectly fine. But that's almost always how elections are going to be now. We are such a divided country that basically it's going to be 51, 49 percent every single time. Um, But uh, so so and then. Uh, immediately after that, Republican Governor Brian Kemp certified uh, certified the state's vote so that uh, so that all 16 electors now will uh, be chosen to go for Biden, which is an immediate and immediately Donald Trump came after. Yeah, his boy, Brian Kemp. Oh, yeah. Which is ridiculous. That was that was the guy that he campaigned <laughs> for the guy that sat on the back of a of a of a pickup truck and shot a shotgun into the ground like that is Trump's guy, and he immediately turned on him. So, so understand this. It's not a federal agency that's requesting that the votes be again recounted in the state of Georgia. It's the Trump campaign. In Wisconsin, in order to complete a full statewide recount, it was going to cost the Trump campaign $8 million, which I'm not sure if you all are aware of this. Trump's campaign is broke. If you if you are a Trump supporter, I imagine if you've ever donated, <laughs> to campaign, you probably have been getting the emails that basically sound like the desperate attempt of some crack addict who doesn't have the money to support their habit <laughs> anymore. Like it is, it is, it sounds so desperate. I think one of them that I and I never donated to the Trump campaign, but I I I was I did vote in the Republican primary, which means my name was on the list. Um, they sound so incredibly desperate because. It's coming across at like the, the last one I got said final notice, you know, you have not made any donations to the Trump campaign or the or the, the make America great again <laughs> pack, you know, whatever action committee. Um, so they, they sound incredibly desperate. And then when you go in and read the fine print, like literally it tells you that if it's not at least an eight thousand dollar payment, 
that half of it will go to Trump's campaign to, to pay for yep. his outstanding debt. And then the other half will go into the RNC to pay for future campaigns. So, unless- well, no, it's 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 actually 60 40. He made Trump yeah. made the pact that where it's 60 40 and 60 has to go to the RNC, I believe, and 40 has to go to Trump. And it's literally because Trump knows I fucking need money it's because com- I'm in serious crap. Yeah, he was in completely broke. But, um, so the Trump campaign did manage to wire $3 million that they had raised to the state of Milwaukee for uh, to the election commission for the state of Milwaukee so that they can run uh, they can run recounts in Milwaukee and, and Dane County, which are heavily Democratic vote counties. There's no that their idea basically is if they get if they can find enough fraudulent ballots ever going to happen, um, but if they can find enough ballots to possibly get trump ahead in those counties then the then the likelihood is that they would go ahead and invest the 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 remainder five million dollars into doing a full statewide recount it's not going to happen they're not going to find enough votes no. milwaukee milwaukee uh, uh wisconsin went handedly to biden uh i mean enough that it doesn't matter um and apparently yeah, the- loud loud and clear trump has lost right stop it's Quit there setting is. little fires and and be palatable. Go out with dignity. I mean, I don't, I do not understand outside of knowing that this egomaniac is out there that you clearly don't care about America for one. That that is so apparent yeah. that you you are now basically just rigging little explosives for when joe biden comes in setting small fires exactly drilling holes in the boat letting Most the water small. in so They're when he gets in this in it's 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 so dumb well apparently the recount is underway in in milwaukee and dane county and apparently the thing that is <clears throat> is really screwing up is specifically the trump observer so this is this is being reported um, Trump observers are not adhering to the rules set by the Secretary of State in Wisconsin. Complaints include Trump observers talking to the counters, which is not allowed, um, crossing past the observer line, which is not allowed. They are tapping and sometimes knocking down the plastic shield that's separating the observers from the counters. Some of the slowdown is likely being caused by Trump supporters or, or observers, sorry, requesting that the official counters literally hold the ballots up so that they can look at the signatures and the envelopes to verify that these ballots are valid. So now you not only have the counters and the and and the people doing the recount having to go through and look all look at look at every single vote by hand, every single one of them, but they are literally in some cases having to hold the ballots up to the window to show them exactly what it is they're looking at. It is insane. They are not supposed yeah, to Yeah, we have a couple of million to go, guy. Uh, you want to look at this one asshole? How about this one asshole? You want to look at this one? Sir. I, uh, I would instantly get fired. What so, happened? He he punched a, uh, one of the RNC Trump <laughs> observers right in the mouth here's, with his mask off. Here's the fear. So if the election results aren't certified on time, what happens? Well, this is where things kind of get sticky because if they are not certified and, 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 and everything <clears throat> happens the way it seems, though. So Trump knows that he can't win the election through litigation now. He couldn't win it through winning the actual election being voted for so the idea now is if they hose up the certification of elections in in certain states or in several of the states there is a potential that in those states being that i'm just gonna say these states again in those states uh they have a republican controlled state house and in those states the potential is is that the republican controlled state house would then be able to vote and select their electors specifically, there is a 3% fear that in that situation that you could potentially see electors chosen that would be considered faithless elector, electors and go with Donald Trump rather than Biden who won the vote in their state. That is a low possibility because even in some of these Republican held states, we are seeing that the secretary of state who potentially like in Georgia is a, is a Republican and the governor also a Republican in the state of Georgia, that they're going ahead and certifying before the president can launch a Twitter tirade against them. 
And that's essentially yeah. that's, that is literally the only thing any of these Republicans have to fear is the potential that the president is just going to unleash a, a barrage of tweets. He holds there is no bite to this president. He holds no value whatsoever when it comes to his mouth and the words that he uses. There, there's nothing. There's no reason to fear anything that he has because eventually, just like every other cult leader, eventually either either the people people abandon them or they 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 learn from it and and they move on. I mean, eventually every cult leader loses their flock. That's what happens. So well, and now and now we we don't have to listen to him, right? I mean, at least he's gonna sit here and 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 and. I mean, what the press secretary made it made an announcement, did did a briefing for the first time in a month the other day. Yeah, you don't care. You're done. No, they don't. Yeah, and, and he knows he's done. But it, this is what we call kicking and screaming. Yeah, this is when you you know grab the child by the hand and lead them out the door. He's Thankfully, making. it's going to be the U.S. Marshal Service. Yeah, it's it's. He's making a show. No, up. I'm not. I'm not worried about like the the minute shit they are trying to pull in these certain um states and stuff in these counties yeah it's not gonna reverse what what has happened uh, you lost and yeah. and even you have mitt rodney coming out saying it, this president is virtually to sum it up is the most undemocratic thing yeah to have ever happened to this country you know what though that's I mitt romney Exactly. But I, I and, and while I while I acknowledge and, and I agree with his opinion, I, I have to also acknowledge that he and three other senators had the ability to put a stop to this back in January. Mm -hmm. They and all did nothing made. I mean, he did. Mitt Romney voted on the right side. Yeah. Left side. Um, but but the other three. There was there was at that point, you could have brought a stop to all of this. You could have led him out of the White House then. And then I, I, I'm not saying that Mike Pence would have been perfect when it came to this pandemic, but I feel mm. he would at least would have put a little bit more effort into it and, and shown some leadership because even Mike Pence being the head of the task force for the covid virus that he was still handicapped by literally the guy that's standing behind him telling, telling everybody, nope, it's not really real. It's not that big a deal. Don't wear a mask. You don't really need to. You don't really need a social Bleach and sunlight. Yeah, we need to open up the, the economy. Everything needs to go back to normal, even though literally we are now across the 250,000 threshold of people that have died in the United States. We've, we've crossed, we're, we're likely to be crossing over the 12 million mark here soon, if we haven't already, and the number of cases that have been confirmed in the United States. So we're, we're I, even, even with Pence being handed the keys to the COVID task force, he was still completely handicapped by the guy that was standing behind him for every single one of those press conferences, basically, you know, just shifting back and forth as, as Pence and, and the rest of the people would try and discuss it and tell us what's going on. Like, at no point did he show any leadership function. And and I am still astounded by the number of people that look at Trump and look at Biden and go, mm, Trump's still better. Like we've had four years of example uh, of Trump not being better. You've turned your moral compass just directly off. Yeah. And it, then through the battery. I, I, I don't, um, we do, I do, I know we're going to hang it up soon. Um, uh, we need to talk about the parlor thing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We can. We so can for it those of you who don't know, I uh, how how would you describe the, parlor this, to somebody that doesn't know it? So <laughs> I I I haven't ever been on it, but from what I understand that it is, um, it's basically Twitter for bigots. <laughs> uh, the same people who 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 came out and criticized people in colleges for wanting a place where they could go speak their mind without fearing from um, people who were Trump supporters or whatever and didn't agree with them would, wouldn't violently threaten them and stuff now literally are leaving Twitter for the safe place called parlor, which is a Twitter for, like I just said, all right frame of, I guess you call it thought there wasn't yeah. much of it put into it it yeah. to the point where like uh i uh, got this from last night last week tonight with john oliver 
it was originally called parlay and then they came in and said it's parlor added an r on it parlor (laughs) (laughs) it was parlay so they can go there without fear of having uh reasonable people that are even reasonable republicans and stuff criticize their ideas they want to be able to promote QAnon, right and not get banned they want to be able to spout uh you know um alex jones type conspiracy theories about sandy hook without getting you know right. banned uh but don't worry just don't download parlor and you're fine yeah. but i think it is very ironic yeah. for them to be shuffling over there I did, and I and did. and that goes with fa- some famous people doing it too. Oh gosh, like uh, who 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 famous has has joined the parlor club, parlay club? Uh, the MMA fighter that is on, uh, <laughs> the Mandalorian. Yeah, uh, she she's gone over there and is being crucified. I I agree that she's up to her opinion, and I don't think sure. she should not be in the but show. I think I, I think I, she's fantastic in the show. But I, uh, do I think she's a sissy for like wanting to go over to Parlor? Yeah, as a person, I could I don't care for her views, but when she's on the Mandalorian, I think she's perfectly fine. Yeah, do she, not get this crossed. Tom Tom Cruise is I think he's a psychopath sci- Scientologist. Sure. His movies are super dope. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. No, I. Cool. I <laughs> I, I I tried to so I was asked the same question as, or I was at least asked the question what what exactly parlor is and I said I said well parlor describes itself as a uh, social media platform that is completely uh, unmonitored uh, in the sense that you can say or do anything you want as long as it adheres to you know like FCC rules or state, you know, state and local law enforcement rules as far as like no child pornography and things like that. Like it's not it. Yeah, you I don't threaten won't get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't make any terroristic threats, anything like that. But there is literally no one monitoring the things that are said, whether they're factual or not. And that's the essentially the issue that a lot of these people have is that they have left Twitter and they have. Well, they haven't left. They didn't delete their Facebook accounts. They didn't delete their Twitter accounts. They're still looking at them. They're just not using it as a forum where they put out their <laughs> their opinions and theories. I don't know. Hey, I, crazy I, people! I got some crazy shit for y'all to hear. Come on I, over. I don't know. Follow how to, me. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to describe <laughs> a lot of it because when I when I when I see <laughs> when I see the comments that people make, or if I see a meme that has been clearly detected by Facebook or whatnot, and I and I look at it and I'm like, where <laughs> where did they come up with that? Like the whole QAnon platform is basically this idea that there are there is an upper echelon of Democrats that are harvesting babies and drinking their blood, and 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 that there's pizza involved tom hanks is leading it and now is in greece because he's been eating too many babies yeah so uh, I, 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 it's holy shit these are the people that normally you would just be like you go to the flea market and that guy's standing and yelling yeah. with like a bible or whatever yeah. Yeah. or a cardboard sign that's fu- that's what parlor is full of exactly you're, you're just like what yeah. the end of the end of the world like exactly and but I, I'll say this as, as one of the last things that I say tonight, in that I did ask one of the people that we work with whether or not I could help him sign up for his parlor account. So <laughs> <laughs> I you know can well, I just get on there to see? Because yeah, I, yeah. I I don't I I I I don't try to get into conversations about politics at work. I, I attempt to stay out of them. In fact, I hear them behind me almost nonstop and and i want to participate but at the same time i don't want to participate because ultimately there's no changing a lot of opinions for some people you you can't you can't persuade them and and bill maher said it perfectly this week the people that you see that are clearly in trump's grasp that they are part of his cult those people are not stupid they 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 need to be it, it's just like any cult enlightened you, yeah it's it's <laughs> what you need to handle them with care and with love and you what you need to do is you need to you need to express to them 
who they were before they became this version of themselves that you, in, in order to lead them back, you have to remind them who they were. And ultimately that's, I think once we have Biden as, as not president elect anymore, but actual president, I think because we will have, I say this, I say this cautiously, but we potentially will have less of the crazy influence that we might be able to pull ourselves back because yeah. ultimately I think, I think we can potentially see a repair to our country and under Biden and, and Kamala Harris. I think that we will, but it, it, it's going to take involving the people that we think we have lost. We, we can get well, them back. We can't. Yeah. It, it it is just like Biden says he he wants to be president for people who did and did not vote for him he he wants to hear you and do and 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 act upon how you feel as well and and it's a range of not being a crazy person and hearing racist yell something and being like he's one of mine let's do that yeah this I think I think the main problem is it's the cognitive dissonance between what what is actually happening and how you think and how you talk yourself like for an example um i saw a video of like five maga people outside of a voting booth listening to killing in the name by rage against the machine wearing maga stuff and waving a blue line american flag and i'm going have you even listened to two words in the song yeah yeah they're they're way off that's I mean, yeah. I, it's like this song is. I it, it 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 literally blew my mind. I hadn't. How are you? Yeah, it's a rock song, and you clearly have no attention to lyrics as to what they're talking about. Yeah. And they're just sitting there with their their and blue lives. I mean, I I support police and stuff like that, but for you to be doing that <laughs> is is just on on the cognitive dissonance is at a level i've i've never seen in my life yeah yeah it, it, I agree. it's insane um i'm i'm hoping insane. that i'm hoping that we will that our future uh includes again pulling back all of those those individuals pulling them back into what is reality and and i recognize that someone could be watching this or listening to this right now and 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 you're thinking barrett's wrong Barrett is outside of reality. And, and I fully, I, I fully believe that you potentially might be correct. There is, there is the possibility that I am not seeing everything through the curtains or through, through tinted glasses, but I, I, I recognize, I recognize people's behavior and I recognize I can observe what I see and what I hear, not just based on somebody else telling me what it is that I should be seeing and what I should be hearing. I, I can right. see, I can see through those goggles, those tinted glasses, and I can see the truth. And Donald Trump's reality is not actual reality. These, these MAGA supporters are, are, are living in a world of, of fiction that they have to even remind themselves how to be and how to act and how to behave every single time they walk out of their door. I guarantee you that, that if, if for one day they were just to, just to say, you know what, I, I'm not going to pick up, I'm not going to pick up on the, on the news feed that, that I read all the time that has nothing but negative information about blacks or Democrats or, or Joe Biden or whatever. Well, and that, you're right. That's sorry. I didn't mean to no, interrupt you're you. No, you're good. It's, Go for it. It it's it takes so much more effort to objectively look at things when you start to objectively look at things. When you try when you have to knowingly know you have a bias, put it aside, objectively take in the information, and then fact find whether it's true or not. And that's the whole thing why people 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 say like lie to me. The truth can be very painful Agreed. because it it is the fact at the end and i think a lot of people you know uh, tend to just agree with what that echo chamber i mean like parlor uh, that's it could be echochamber.com for all 
yeah. anybody all intents and purposes it and people i'm guilty of it barrett you're guilty of it everyone yeah. listening is guilty of getting into their own echo chambers and having things agree with them but when you sit back and objectively look at things you it's 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 literally like a, an exercise in consciousness to sit back and say i think this and then dissect it and go forward from there to, right. to actually find fact corroborate from reliable sources everyone here was taught to do that in high school I, you write the paper you need to cite your sources and right. then i don't know about y'all but whenever you would write wikipedia you had a big red line cross through it <laughs> so like I, not a not a citable source i realize i'm going to age myself again but we didn't have wikipedia when i was in school we had insight no yeah the britannica uh online Giant books lettered you know, <laughs> it, it, yeah that, that guy came and sold lettered. you out of a car right for sure i remember i yeah we I had honestly, that too i had that too i honestly remember there being guys people that would go around <laughs> selling encyclopedias they'll be delivered yep. we used to get national geographics by mail like we would get the national geographic every single month we used to get readers digest i mean i still get national geographic every month do you it's not because i want to yes <laughs> long story told but gabrielle and i started dating she's like it would be good for us to get magazines when we were at second charles she's like fill one out and i was like i don't want to lost the paper and for like three years now i've been getting uh national geographic and i'm like oh my god stop are you still are you still paying for that yes <laughs> it's not okay well uh, you know and this is this is not a uh this is not an attempt to uh, to to do any sort of like uh, commercials or whatever for um, for Apple or or News Plus or anything like that. But uh, literally, I get I get National Geographic delivered to me now through through my iPad. So that's uh, you know, look. Oh, I love Net Geo. I'm just not down with paying for it. Sure. Yeah, I get that. I, I, I get that. <laughs> and then when you have a stack of them, you're like, it's getting out of control now. Oh yeah, no. This it's it's. Here's the thing that the National Geographic's and Popular Mechanics and Popular Science. These were all magazines that we got when I was a kid, and and the, I imagine that if we continued to get them from then till even till now, that there would be a crack in a ceiling or a roof somewhere because all you did was just store them in the you know after you did them you got them you read through them or you you know pan through them and then you'd put them in a box that would then go up in the attic. Oh and man, sure I, had, I had I had Game Informer's uh, subscription for 15 years straight. Nintendo my dad Power. can my dad can <laughs> my dad condemned my storage my storage room that was in my room. He's like, "This is a fire hazard. <laughs> yeah, Take exactly. them outside. We're burning all of them." Yeah. And I was like, "But they're collectible. Look!" And there's like hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. 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 I had every Game Informer. I had I had Nintendo Power. Nintendo Power was the one that yeah. I got every single month, and I don't even, every month. I don't, I don't imagine that they even publish Nintendo Power anymore. But that was that was the one that I made sure that that we signed up for every year. So. Yeah, well, and, and and we're about to head off, but talking about Nintendo Power and just to make you not feel so old, Barrett. When I was a kid, we used to go to the grocery store and find the tips and tricks and bring our own piece of paper to open to the back and write down the cheat codes for like Grand Theft Auto and stuff because tips and tricks always had the cheat codes in the back, but we didn't have any money to buy the magazine. So while mom's grocery shopping, we're over there just writing down like up, down, left, down, triangle, right, <laughs> trick. Like, so I know how it feels. I know, I know what it's like. Contra. When that, that was Contra, wasn't it? Up, 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 down, down. Yeah, left, up, right, up, left. up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. See, so you, so. you say we haven't aged ourselves, but we clearly just aged ourselves. Well, you, you aged Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bought Contra new. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even I don't even think we bought Contra new. We did have we did have the Nintendo Entertainment System. I I feel like I borrowed. We initially borrowed Contra. If 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 I even ever had it, I I, I remember playing it. I think we borrowed it. Uh, that was yeah. That was back when a kid. You know, you got a Nintendo game, and and it being an eight bit system, you know the 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 levels were limited. 
honestly. So chances are, if you if you got the game like when it came out on Tuesday or whatever, that you probably if if you didn't have anything else going on, whether baseball or or band or whatever wasn't happening, then then chances are you played it, and then by the end of the week you were like, ah, I finished it, done. Well, and then, and then you never got to play if you made the mistake of showing your dad uh, duck hunt. <laughs> That hunt was fun. That hunt was yeah, fun. It was great. I still don't understand how that gun, how that gun was able to, to, to shoot anything. There wasn't anything on the television that recognized that, that you were. Do you want to know? Yes. Tell me, please. So when you get a video camera and you look at the tube TV, you see the lines going down. Yeah. Uh, it's too fast for our eyes to catch. The gun can catch it. Oh, so when you pull okay. the trigger and it shoots it, it has it knows where you were pointing as to uh, where the line on the screen was so yeah that's how so, that works so duck and then hunt. other ones other ones would use the black and i think duck hunt did it too but it, it relies on the line the black you would see the flash of the white or black square real quick when you shot the duck right behind it it's i mean it's a snap oh okay it would it would, it would interrupt the line with that and so that's how you knew interesting how it was okay. so yeah that that's why they don't work on like lcd tvs and stuff right like guns don't work okay you have to have a tube it's, tv that look, has the education they call them crt yeah i actually just learned that last week so you guys are <laughs> welcome it's very awesome that you asked that question <laughs> that's great i knew well, i knew that they didn't work on lcds because they yeah. keep buying light guns for the dreamcast but oh, that right, is why right. now i and now i know why it does not work all right. Well, no, I'm. I'm. Thank I'm, you, Linus Tech Tips. Uh, yeah, <laughs> check absolutely. out Linus Tech Tips. I look. That's that's interesting. I I, I was always curious as about because there was nothing for you to. There was nothing to, as far as I was concerned, was relative. But it was the gun that was actually reading the screen. That's okay. I'll take that. Yeah, it, uh, it's the lines that were. It's just kind of like a frames per second. You're actually just seeing images when you watch a movie, but the sure. images are so fast. It's the same kind of thing. The lines are just too fast for you to see. That's, Gun picks it up. I am. I am glad to know that now. Did you know the second controller controlled the duck? I did. I did know, know that. that. I did. Will you can send them out and that. stuff. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Okay. Well, now I feel like I'm gonna have to go watch YouTube videos of people. God, there's no way. I don't. There's no way I can find that game or a television that would support that technology anymore. So, <laughs> great. COVID Keith has one. Does he? Yeah. We okay. play a House of the Dead on his Dreamcast. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's... had to go had to go buy special guns. Yeah. That's cool. Well, you know, like I said, it is very look, cool. If if this is your only source of news and education and information, look, tonight <laughs> there's no way you didn't learn something. Absolutely. Yeah. We could halfway run an arcade. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for you uh, who don't know, uh, arcades were places that you had to go yeah. and put quarters in yeah. while your mother went and got her hair done. You were in the arcade. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. a, there's, there's a small one high scores. He's over on St. Andrews. That's, uh, that's, that's where you'll find the last one. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, Zach, it has been a great show. Uh, I uh, want to thank you for joining me tonight. That's, uh, that's as always. Absolutely, man. Uh, hate that i mean for me i hate we don't have trent on tonight but i know that uh, we know that he's traveling uh for the he was and or is watching oh well hello trent glad that uh that you you're watching <laughs> um look uh we will we i it, it is thanksgiving coming up so at this point i'm gonna say we're probably i don't know it's a sunday we could we could do a show next week I, we could we could potentially do a show if uh if 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 zach wanted to now it's all on you <laughs> let's right. do it okay so it looks like we'll probably do a show we may we may even get a guest to come in and 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 and, and sit in with us uh maybe we'll just rehash everything that went on over thanksgiving with uh my non-thanksgiving plans I, I don't know what your thanksgiving plans are yet but uh you know if you have a big Thanksgiving, i don't know either none okay <laughs> well, well <laughs> you know what we might do is we might just make up stories about what thanksgiving possibly would have been without covid had we had a president who was uh, uh, in, engaged in in uh, since January, so maybe maybe we'll do something like that. I don't know. Yeah, he we'll thought parting the turkey was weak. He cut its head off. It's you'll weird. Get, you'll get to see Zach and I do improv together. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> 
All right. Well, it's been another week of the All About Nothing podcast. Real quick, I want to remind you that if uh, if you haven't already, please go to our website and uh, and check us out. Uh, all of the links for all of the podcast platforms are available out there. Theallaboutnothing.com. You'll also find links to uh, any of the shirts and merchandise that are out there. Uh, again, it's not that we're going to make any money off this, but we would really love to potentially see somebody out wearing one of our shirts. That would be awesome. And and there is a line of sweatshirts and hoodies uh, that is also available out there in case because it is winter and you might get cold. Uh, and but we've also planned ahead enough that come spring, there are there are tank tops as well available now too. So uh, make sure to make sure to get as much merchandise as you need in order to wear a shirt every day potentially (laughs) absolutely there you go all right all right well zach thank you very much this has been uh, another all about nothing podcast we will be back next week with episode 57 this is 56 i don't really have anything else to say except to tell everybody to have a good week and we will uh, hope to be listened to by you next week have a week all right